Ta-da! Welcome to Joseph's Hi-Fi in my pursuit for sumptuous sound. Needless to say, it will finally be a quick video this time. We're just going to have a quick chat about the stylus, which was a very welcome Christmas gift. And although we're almost up to the next Christmas, what better time than shooting a video now about it? So I did a bit of, uh, in fact, I did a lot of research, probably a good five years trying to select the perfect stylus for what I wanted to do with my hi-fi. Now, a lot of purists and audiophiles, again, I'm just an enthusiast, uh, will often be, um, when you're taking it quite seriously, you'll be down the avenue of moving coils. Now, that's not to say I'm not going to head down that avenue later on in my uh, pursuit of sound. But there's a reason why I decided to go with the moving magnet. And particularly this one, I do like to uh, keep a rather clean signal chain. Um, and of course, with a moving coil, of course, it all comes down to having um, uh, a phono stage and additional preamplification where necessary. And our magnificent Pioneer SX1980 has the um, facilities for moving coil and a whole range of uh, settings to uh, set accordingly, depending on what uh, ohm loading you're going to have with that particular stylus. And for the moment, I just want to hear some records and have a good time. So why have we gone for this particular stylus? Well, at the end of the day, clear audio make fantastic styluses. It goes without saying they make the gold finger, which at uh, 25,000 Australian dollars is probably one of the single most expensive ones you can get. I don't have that kind of money. And even if I did, I would rather spend it on more records than uh, going down that avenue. But you all know the story. Getting a stylus like that means a pretty serious uh, phono stage, uh, pre-amplifier, power amplifier, speakers. It, we're well in the category of probably a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand plus dollars on hi-fi, and it's just something that, sure, it's going to sound fantastic, but I need to live with myself as well, and that's not ticking my boxes, unfortunately. So I wanted to keep it clean. I like to just have the um, stylus, the turntable, straight into the amplifier pumping straight out to my speakers. And that's why I went for this. But when it comes to uh, sound quality, of course, there is plenty of good stuff in the market to be had in that sort of thousand dollars or less. Now, by the time we come in with the um, goods and services tax we need to pay, and this particular stylus came from Europe, uh, this was just under 2000 Australian dollars. In fact, about $1,800, if I'm telling you the truth. Uh, again, it was a gift, so I don't want to go into any details. I just accept what it was, and I've got a very, uh, I usually say very happy wife, happy life, but I'm the opposite end on this occasion, like a child in a candy store or a toy store. I couldn't be happier with this. The sound is absolutely everything that the reviews say it's going to be. I mean, blows everything else away. And as a lot of people say, you're getting the sound from it that you sort of will be getting when you're jumping into the world of moving coils. I really, really like this. It's clean, it's tidy. I'm not going to waste your time trying to do a, a video shooting footage here and there of it because you know as well as me, the recording techniques, the sound you're gonna get through the other end at YouTube and I don't know what you're gonna hear are never gonna be what you hear with these things being here in real life. So at the end of the day, this is what I've chosen. When I do play the records, I don't have the slip mat on. I don't have anything else. I go vinyl straight down onto the rubber and then on it goes. And that's as clean as it is. Here's a little sneak bit of footage over here. I'm going to have to exclude the audio because I don't want to get in trouble for that. Of course, with so many YouTube videos and hi-fi things, it's a little bit subjective, me playing a piece of music and you seeing it because of all those things we've just mentioned with the sound quality and what's going to come out the other end. However, I have a few very interesting experiments we're going to have a bit of fun with in a few videos later on that will uh, certainly uh, prove to myself and to the rest of you that we're on the right track here. Ah yes, the magic drawer. Goes without saying, I was very busy Christmas Day with my new toy, it goes without saying. Of course, once again, it's the Clear Audio Maestro version two Ebony. Now, as usual, and I'd recommend it just in general thing for anyone in their turntables, of course, um, Autofondua, wonderful a um, protractor tool at the end of the day. 
so you can make sure things are aligned perfectly for your stylus. I highly recommend it. Uh, the other thing as well is, uh, if possible, uh, you certainly want to pick up one of these little um, scales just to make sure that uh, you've got your weight settings adjusted correctly for your stylus. It's general things that you've all seen in all the other videos that people talk about this stuff, but they're really useful things to have, particularly if you're gonna use multiple cartridges and be changing things. Uh, I would like to be working on getting a second turntable with the primary role of it being a moving coil, but also wanting to run a dedicated mono uh, stylus on there for a lot of mono pressing records that I have. Um, nothing really beats going down that avenue. So that's why I'm sort of leaving that for another uh, story for another day. At the end of the day, as you may well have seen in some of my earlier videos, uh, I wet clean all of my records so they're, they're nice and clean from the get-go. And as soon as I lay one down, of course, you've all got your uh, zero dust that you'll obviously, and any time, <clears throat> even when I've turn the record over to the second side, I will still dunk the stylus straight in against that to give it a clean. But again, because all, all of my wa records have always been washed and they don't get played unless they've gone through the washing process using my Oki Noki, which again, please check the video here. And the situation is that the slip mat comes off, the record comes on, stylus into here, and then away we come. And that's as clean as I like to keep it at the end of the day. There's nothing else interrupting it. Uh, of course, there's a lot of people using their goat hair or their leather type of mats underneath. There's a range of different things from everything I've read and I understood, really nothing truly beats the mat, just the rubber that comes with the turntable at the end of the day. I stick with that. I'm sure there'll be plenty of comments that will disagree with that. It works for me, I'm exceptionally happy. And again, probably after every 10 or 20 plays on any uh, particular album, I will rewash it again. Of course, you've obviously got, um, whether it be your anti-static gun or it could be uh, the brush. If, if you've got a record that's just picked up a little bit of dust along the way, just from being in storage, maybe something's gotten into the sleeve, just a quick wipe over, that's what it's all about. But at the end of the day, as soon as I pick it up, if it's not looking good, I'm gonna go wash that record again. But that's pretty much the story. That's the stylus I've gone with. Couldn't be more happier. I'll see you in the next video. Turtles.